Tropical signals continue in the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. For May the 5th. Another day closer to hurricane season in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's uh, 16 storms so far around the world this year, around the entire world there, with a few systems active right now that we could be looking at for potential development, particularly in the Indian Ocean. You can see so much cloud over there right now on that worldwide view. In the Atlantic it is 27 days until hurricane season begins, just a partial image here on the latest there. You can see a big long frontal system moving along and a curious looking monsoonal depression there in the uh, eastern Pacific but it's not expected to develop. Elsewhere moving on to the uh, western Pacific there's a few little disturbances there as well but nothing expected to form anymore. The one near the Philippines is still blowing up convection but we've now dropped it from the chances. However, we've got a 50% chance for this eventual Bay of Bengal system that we're eyeing up for next week and a 20% system that we've got in the Southern Hemisphere side, which is going to be battling, in fact, they'll probably be battling with their own influences of each other there as they continue through this burst of uh, convection that's advancing eastwards gradually here. Those two areas of interest that we're watching, 20% and 50 in the next seven days. Certainly lots of rainfall over southern India and Sri Lanka right now and over the vast areas of the Indian Ocean, but nothing, ex uh, nothing becoming a tropical cyclone just yet. But nonetheless, look at the last 24 hours and you'll see a few red zones there depicting areas that have seen large amounts of rain. Those red zones showing very high rain rates at various points in the last 24 hours. You can see one or two little bits there near the Palawan Islands of the Philippines as well. Satellite imagery looks like this. This is what it looks like over there. Lots of cloud cover, two distinct masses as a matter of fact. One near southern India, the other one further southwest. On towards the Philippines, you can see that other system there and one or two systems further east out over the Western Pacific as well, uh, which are invested in Invest 95, I believe it is over there near Palau. But this is Invest 93W, which still has that tag, even though we've dropped its chances, and it is delivering copious amounts of rainfall to the Palawan Peninsula there on the western boundary of the Sulu Sea. Most of the convection though is falling away to the southeast of the island um, with the northwestern and northern parts of the island not really seeing much from this system so far. It is struggling, it doesn't really have a circulation, it is just sounding off and with all of that convection and rainfall right now this looks like partial radar imagery here and I imagine there's a lot more rainfall that's being concealed on this radar view there over the rest of the island. So that's the current picture, all the action there is in this particular snapshot. Sea surface temperatures around the world then look like this. Eastern Pacific still very warm and of course warming, rounding the corner up the coast of Mexico there, 26 degrees Celsius waters quite comfortably. The Atlantic also getting there, the Gulf Stream there across the eastern coast of Florida getting up above 26 degrees quite high up there and the Caribbean getting very warm across the Greater and Lesser Antilles. The Indian Ocean extremely warm temperatures in the Bay of Bengal over 30 degrees Celsius pushing close to 32 degrees degrees at least and a few spots in the Arabian Sea following suit. Southwest Indian Ocean is still on a cooling trend as you'd imagine at this time of year. Uh, Mauritius and La Reunion there around 27 degrees Celsius. Northern Madagascar still has some good sea surface temperatures but the southern part you can forget it. The Australian region Still, maybe one or two spots of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, but mostly cooling now in the Australian region there. And those temperatures are dropping off, particularly over Western Australia, where Ilsa struck as possibly that last hurrah for the season. And in the South Pacific, temperatures still looking good in a few spots there, especially in those lower latitudes, can't rule things out. And the Western Pacific, extremely warm sea surface temperatures around the Philippine Islands in particular, probably uh, spurring on a lot of that convection. Uh, and that other system near Palau as well, temperatures around 30 degrees plus there too. 
It is close to average in the Western Pacific, slightly above is the Eastern Pacific near the equator that's really showing off right now with that extreme uh, warm anomaly, sign of an El Nino on the way and extending a little bit to the rest of the Eastern Pacific, but there's still a big cool pool, although I have noted there it is shrinking in the latest few bulletins. Atlantic looking very warm, Gulf of Mexico a small weakness there. Oceanic heat content still looking good as we look at this latest view uh, in the South Pacific in a few locations near Vanuatu and Fiji, but at those high latitudes not so much. Western Pacific uh, really coming on strong in the Philippine Sea primarily and also down towards Micronesia. Eastern Pacific also really getting there much better than what we were seeing last year. GFS model over the next five days and oh dear it is actually showing something forming in the central pacific but i gotta tell you here and now that no other models are supporting this and this has just come up on the latest run a little system there that does look like it becomes potentially a tropical storm and that would be named Hone. so alarm bells are going to be ringing in the heads of Hone fans right now over there in the central pacific but no signs that this thing will form and we haven't designated it a percentage more importantly then the Indian Ocean and you can see the progress of these potential systems and it has gotten quite a bit more convoluted than the last time we were looking at this. Um, it pushes out eastwards all of that energy pushing eastwards there and both of those systems that we've been depicting both form further east which gives them less room to maneuver around Indonesia uh, and in the Andaman uh, Sea region that system and another system trying to tag along with it there so it gets very complex over there in the North Indian Ocean uh, but nonetheless we're looking at both systems according to the GFS getting to hurricane equivalent status regardless it is looking like a bigger rainfall event for Indonesia now particularly along the western coast of Sumatra and we could be looking at enormous rainfall totals along that area uh, as well as possibly more now for the Andaman Island region. Look at that, getting up towards 15 inches of rain there in the next seven days. That is close to 400 millimeters and higher amounts still in parts of Indonesia, possibly getting up to 20 inches or 500 millimeters for the northwestern tip of Sumatra. Uh, around Sri Lanka there, you can just see over there as well, uh, a few spots where there's uh, elevated rainfall amounts, but generally not so much. It's going to stay just off the coast, uh, but certainly we're looking at real monsoonal type rainfall patterns here across the uh, southern part of the Bay of Bengal longer range what happens eventually to this system well the gfs is sticking to its guns on it becoming a very powerful storm there category four as it heads up towards the coast of myanmar uh, a landfall further east obviously as the system developed further east and so it makes landfall there probably somewhere around cox's bazaar if my um geography is still correct it's been a while since we've dealt with these areas uh, passing just to the west of Yangon and further towards the north you can also see that other system down there in the South Pacific careering away in South Indian sorry scan the barcode and take a look at the force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as full season and individual storm animations and the t-shirt still waiting for Hode which could be going out of fashion fairly soon if the GFS has its way well into the silly range then and don't take these scenarios seriously well there's just one real thing to look at today and it's the GFS throwing up a long range uh, Arabian Sea system. It should also be pointed out that the uh, 12Z GFS run earlier today was uh, throwing up an Atlantic system very close to the end of the 16 day period in the Gulf of Mexico. Thought I'd mention that. But right now it is throwing up this one instead. Arabian Sea around the 17th, 18th of May developing and moving northeastwards. Can't rule out a track like that, especially at this time of year. I'm thinking about a more easterly Makunu perhaps, uh, but I would say that's very unlikely. Nonetheless, you can talk about this and any other tropical weather and general weather and science in general too on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 with over 3,000 uh, force13 viewers from around the world. Well then, on May 5th, 2004, a somewhat similar scenario was playing out actually, although it was uh, quite different in its location. Juba had just formed in the South Indian Ocean, a very unusual 
A slightly unusual location for it to form and it has squiggled around for a few days, failed to get very strong and also Tropical Storm 1B had just been initiated off the western coast of India and that's what the image is referencing there and it skirted up the coast uh, and got a little bit stronger later on, can't remember what its peak intensity was but that's what we had right now, 1A that was, not 1B. Anyways, uh, in the Atlantic this year, the first name on the naming list is Arlene. For those who are just joining us after hibernating in the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. We never got it and since 2019. We've been waiting for it. In the Western Pacific, next up is Mawa, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Mocha if this system gets its name and could be a big Mocha on its way towards the coast. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region's next name is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, and South Pacific, Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>